everybody, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Conrad. Um, as we set in our schedule that we are um, open to changing the topics that are on the schedule, we've got a special surprise today. Uh, we're being joined by Matt Sosman and Jeff Skidmore from Microsoft. Uh, Matt Sosman is a partner technical architect, uh, one of uh, our favorite security uh, experts over at Microsoft. If you watched any of our tech talks, you've seen his work. Um, and Jeff Skidmore is our um, partner development manager, and he works behind the scenes and helps keep me informed of things that are happening at Microsoft. And that's really kind of what guides us and lets us stay one step ahead of the curve in the content that we provide. And of course, as always, we've got Conrad Agramont, uh, Agile IT's CEO. And today we're going to be just talking about some remote work stories, kind of bantering about the things we've seen since COVID-19. And yeah, um, how are you doing this morning, Matt? I am doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And how about you, Jeff? Doing well, Sean. Thanks. Great. And Matt, you're working in California. Jeff, you're in Oregon. And then Conrad and I are both in San Diego. That's correct? That's That's correct. correct. Uh, We're definitely San Diego. But Sean, you forgot one other person. Oh, well, we've got uh, Maggie McGraw, who is our director of operations online. And it's hard for me because she's showing up on our end as you, Conrad, because you forwarded her the link. <laughs> well, I am you know. always Conrad. Yes, Maggie is almost always Conrad. Maggie is responsible <laughs> for uh, keeping things running here. Um, if you are an Agile IT client, you have almost definitely talked to Maggie. And if not, she has influenced the conversations you've had with our team. <laughs> All right. So, Conrad, I'm going to let you go ahead and kind of start the banter here um yeah. we've seen a few uh war stories recently yeah you know we were talking earlier i mean our, our previous topic we were, we we're talking about how remote work um isn't temporary culture and you know that was just you know it just kind of reflecting on that some of the thing some of the processes the tools that we've used for ourselves and we've been doing it for a long time but as we are 100% remote with one another, and as much as we're using these tools, we needed to, to kind of expand it uh, in order to, to to communicate a little bit more effectively, to to have a, a way of, of just sharing fun things with water cooler. That other session covers it. But when we're talking with, with Matt and Jeff, uh, we really appreciate their perspective. So I think this is great that they're able to jump on because they talk to a lot of other customers and partners. So I always love to hear what other people are, are, are doing um, because that helps me out, um, you know, learn a little bit more. And for those that attend here, give you a little bit more perspective. So, you know, Matt, one of the things that, you know, you and I have talked about is, you know, even with other technology companies, you know, they will, you know, they were still kind of mixed. And so when this happened, the things you've talked so much and, you and, and you know, we, we try to be way on the edge and you encourage us and keep pushing us, which I appreciate. Don't ever stop doing that. Um, but you know, we're pretty much in lockstep with that, but you've run into a lot of other ones that people that decided to, to push it away. Um, you know, what what can you share for them of their struggles and kind of how are they starting to remap to, to, to do better in this remote world? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And, you know, thanks again for having me. It's always a pleasure to, to come on these uh, calls with you guys and webinars and, and talk with your customers. So, yeah, it's, it's an interesting topic. I've Personally, I've been remote for almost 20 years through three different employers and all three companies, they, they kind of deal r- with remote work differently. I mean, everybody has a different culture around it. But, you know, some of the companies I've worked with uh, just over the last few months, um, I'll, I'll share a couple examples here. So one of them, they have never had a work remote culture. Um, they have about 100 employees or so, give or take. And they all come in the office every day. Everybody is in the same city. Um, they, everybody has a desktop computer. Nobody has a laptop, which I think is really interesting. And uh, they come in the office every day and, uh, and they meet with each other. They have probably got 20 or 30 meeting rooms and most of their day is filled with meetings and it's filled with conference calls with their customers and everybody's in the office. And uh, you know, that's that's really great, right? I mean, you know, when you're in the office with somebody, you can you can walk by their desk and talk with them, and you can you can get things done. And then when you go home at the end of the day, it feels like you got something done, right? Well, when the situation happened here, and and people had to start sending their employees home, 
uh, that customer in particular, uh, it, it kind of turned their world upside down. I mean, here they are, they've never had a remote work culture. Their employees have never really worked from home before unless they're with a different employer and they don't even have the technology to do it. They all had desktop computers. So, you know, problem number one was, well, how do we let people work from home if they don't have a computer? And so um, that was number one. And then number two was, how do we stay connected with each other? We're so used to talking with each other, stopping by desks and everything, meeting in person. You know, how do we still communicate and collaborate? And then problem number three was from a, a culture perspective, how do we make sure people are doing their jobs and making sure that we're still satisfying our customers' needs and that kind of thing? So that introduced a lot of interesting challenges. And um, come to find out, there's a lot of organizations out there right now, uh, probably worldwide, but at least here in the US, I know quite a few that are in those same different challenges. And uh, you know, it's something that just all of us have to kind of work through. But when you start to peel back that onion, uh, the technology is certainly there. Um, you know, I, I could tell you just as a, a my, you know, personal, I've been working from home for a long time, and the technology has gotten way better than it was almost 20 year, years ago when I first started, you know, being remote. But uh, the technology is there. But when you think about the people in process and the culture, uh, that has to be there as well. And, and you know, it starts with leadership at the top and and making sure that uh, you know the right message is communicated and and that you know people are comfortable with it and so um i could kind of keep going down going down that path with that story though but i just want to pause there for a moment and, and you know just maybe turn over to your, you conrad when you think about that people in process and that, that leadership you know response to the work remote i mean how do you deal with that with your company you know it's um you know i think one of the th interesting points that you made was you know and by the way we before this we did work in in the office every day um but Everybody that works at the company has a laptop. Even the developers who have a full desktop because they just need a little bit more power, they normally also get a Surface Book because we wanted them to be able to go to meetings, take notes, wanted them to be able to work from home if they needed to. Because uh, sometimes it happens. They have, you know, kids or other things like they're getting a refrigerator delivered. Like, I don't care. Like, just as long as you <laughs> make the meeting. Uh, so when we all had a split, we already had everything there um, to, to to take advantage of it. So. Uh, that worked out well. But the other thing is, you know, you uh, as a leader, um, especially right now, you want to keep your business running. And, our, you know, in our business, we're, you know, we're driven by by our people. That's why uh, our customers reach out to us because of, of the knowledge we have and, and our people. So, you know, we want to make sure that they have access to things, that they can be productive. And we try new things all the time, things that sometimes Spicer is doing a great job of doing research. Like, hey, what about this? Or, you know, I think Maggie really uh, uh, kind of came up with the the the, the happy hour, um, and that's made you know a, a huge difference. Right? I mean, Maggie, what do you think is like that really comes well from the happy hour? Uh, lots of memes. <laughs> uh, I I think the main thing is that we all get so focused on what we have to do every day to support our customers, to support each other and, and really be productive and drive the business forward. That us having a little bit of time as a company to wind down together at the end of the week, where it's just jokes, we don't talk about work, we talk about video games, we talk about weekend non-plans at this point. Um, we, we've played trivia together, we've played bingo, just having time for us to laugh and be together as people instead of as coworkers with a goal seems to be really nice for for everyone. Yeah, and I always had the opportunity in the office to spend time with our engineers, with our support personnel, where I could get a feel for what was going on in the company, what our projects were, um, what pain points were, but a lot of that was also just catching up with friends, how's the wife, how's the kid, and my favorite happy hour wound up being like happy three and a half, four hours where Paul, Matt and I, and not this Matt, uh, Matt A, who is one of our cloud uh, engineers, we stayed on the line talking for about two hours about old heavy metal albums. Um, and it was just great to have that connection again because it was the kind of stuff we discuss out like over lunch. Right. Yeah. I mean. Jeff, for you, when, you know, you've been working remote for many years because you live in, you know, some crazy place in Oregon, I think. And, uh, you know, it, it's 
you, you've had to, to work with a lot of different people. Have you noticed anything different of how you used to have to work with partners that, um, uh, you know, that, did, that didn't work in a really kind of online world, like you always had to fly out there or, or go do something. And now those same partners, because everybody's working remote, like they're just getting better at it, but maybe they're still in transition. You know, what I've seen is, um, I think an increase in, in, in a couple of ways in what I'll call uh, like communication efficiencies. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of partners that I work with um, are now uh, telling me that they're busier than ever. They have figured out that working remotely, they can actually uh, do more meetings in a day. And so, I mean, it, it seems logical to someone like me that's, you know, primarily worked from home for, you know, 15, 20 years. Um, but it, I think it's a learning moment for a lot of, not just partners, but customers that you can accomplish a lot um, from a remote perspective that, you know, three, four months ago, you might not have considered doing remotely. And so that that's a, a big lesson that I think a lot of my partners and and the customers that they work with are, are learning at this time. I mean, how, how many people out there are like me? I mean, cause I, I worked remote for a number of years and but I didn't really, you know, you, you, you do a lot of work, but then you go downstairs and put a new load on the laundry to get on another call, right? You, you're, you're working, but you're doing these other things. Uh, maybe not because you can't go to the grocery store really easy during the middle day. You don't do it as much, but you know, I, how many people out there all, but even with you all, there was, I think in January and this thing's been around forever, I think like maybe around uh, January or something, there was like this article uh, again, we've all seen it. It was like people that work remotely actually work, you know, longer hours are more productive. You should do more remote work instead of bringing people to the office. Other than, Come on. Like, are they really doing more work? Well, geez, I, I feel super busy, even busier now. And I I always have a jam packed schedule, but guess what I don't have to do? I don't have to commute. So it seems like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't have commute time or have to go pick up my kids. So I just have like this tightly stacked day from beginning to end. So I don't know if you, you guys saw that same type of thing. And, and before COVID like, what, that can't be right. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Um, and even when you start to think about kind of going back to that point on you, know, you could get a lot done when you're remote. Absolutely. And but it's also it also could be a negative too. like there there are some days I, I look down at the clock and it's eight o'clock in the morning and then I get on with my day and then I look down at the clock and before I know it, it's eight o'clock at night. And, um, you know, you've gotten a lot done, but you know, you're in the zone and. And that can certainly have an impact on your personal life. And so, you know, something that I've learned over the years is, you know, certainly time management is a big part of it and making sure that, you know, you are using your time wisely when you're, you know, when you're working from home. And, and even here at Microsoft, when we think about uh, meetings and, you know, we have a lot of meetings here. I mean, we're, we're a big company and I'm sure just like Agile IT and, and other companies out there, I mean, everybody has a meeting culture, but, you know, we've noticed through the data and the telemetry of, you know, using Microsoft Teams and, and some of these products that um, people's meetings here at Microsoft are actually starting to get smaller and smaller. Instead of having an hour long meeting to talk about a thing, it's now 30 minutes. And a lot of that's coming down to getting that time management. And we're kind of learning you know, how best to utilize our time when we're remote, but also how do we respect others' time? And you know, rather than you know, having an hour long meeting and taking 30 minutes to even get to the point, let's, let's just have a meeting for 30 minutes and let's get to the point and, and end it. And, uh, you know, it's all about that, you know, staying on task and staying, you know, staying, uh, you know, make, making sure that you're able to, to manage your time appropriately, but it can certainly have a personal impact. And so something I've learned is you just, you just got to make sure you're, you're well organized for that, but let the technology help, right? I mean, if you think about, you know, things like Office 365 and Teams and, and Planner and To-Do and Outlook and all of these different tools, um, gosh, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have those tools, you know, I, I mean, I couldn't imagine trying to be at home and not have those things available, uh, let alone a, a computer, a laptop, and, you know, things like Teams to, to be able to make phone calls, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's really interesting when you when you think about, you know, where we've come from you know, almost 20 years ago and people kind of working remote because they had a sick child or something to where they are now, the technology's really enabled you to do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that really stood out to me, Matt, when you were talking about working remote for almost 20 years, because I think back to, 
um, 17, 15 years ago for me, I think was the first time that I started to do any sort of remote work because I moved into a more national company and the technology was not there. Um, so it was like, oh, log me in and things like this. And it was just, it was terrible. And I'm really grateful for the tools that we have at our disposal now. <clears throat> Conrad mentioned that uh, we had desktops for some of us in the office. For me, it was for video editing as well as laptops. I'm sitting here right now on the Surface and my home personal desktop using Teams in both of them in order to kind of manage files, created the PowerPoint that we're using for our presentation here. And I just can't imagine if anything like this had happened 15 years ago. We'd be working with smoke signals. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh my God. I remember when I was at Microsoft, it was like, this was when, when Exchange 5.5 was still around, like, check your email across the internet. No, no, no. You had a VPN in because <laughs> there was no RPC over HTTP. So you had to like, you know, VPN in just to check your email or, you know, I had to get my, you know, what was it? Compact IPAC, put it in the dock, connected to the computer so I could sync <laughs> my email. You know, I mean, oh, now we're talking about like old stuff. I mean, they back then it would be even harder to even try to do this, let alone, you know, get your AOL dial up to, to be able to then, you know, VPN in and then do all that. It's just crazy. So it's fortunate now that we're able to do this. And I think that actually saves a lot of jobs. I mean, again, if the world was like it was back then, just how difficult was the, you know, I guess we wouldn't say the internet's slow. We'd say the phone lines are slow, but you know. Right. Right. And what's what's really interesting about that, I mean, if you take that VPN example, there's still a lot of organizations out there that 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 still believe that, okay, I need a VPN, I need to be able to get access to everything, I need to be able to, you know, have this corporate asset that's fully locked down to be able to access my email. I mean, there's still this this mentality of that and and I consider that kind of early two thousands, right? I mean, now in, in today's day and age, you don't need a VPN. Um, you know, if you're utilizing the cloud-based services, you, you, that is, you know, those are secure by design and, and being able to, to access that from even a personal iPad or, you know, my, my personal Android smartphone. I mean, the technology is there, but something I've seen over the last couple of months is, and we talk about digital transformation, I kind of put that in air quotes because it is, it is, you know, kind of a marketing term, but it's, it's very real. And I've, I've seen that happen over the last couple of months. Let me just share two quick stories with you. So, um, so just so everybody knows, I, I live in San Diego as well, and um, there's a restaurant uh, across the street from me in the shopping center. It's a, it's a really good Mexican restaurant. And when this whole thing happened, and I go there all the time with my wife, and so when this whole thing happened, um, we were like, great, are they going to close down? Like, this is our favorite place to go. And they didn't close down. And while all of their peers in the restaurant business were furloughing their employees and, and laying off employees, um, they decided to keep all of their employees, but they digitally transformed. Rather than having their servers, you know, serve food to dining customers, and there is no dining customers, they made them into delivery drivers. And they said, okay, rather than serving food, you're now going to go, you know, make deliveries, and we'll accommodate for that, and we'll, we'll adjust for that. And so we ordered food from them, and they delivered the food to our house. And you know, we had masks on; they ring the doorbell, and. And I get to talk to one of them because it was a server that we know because we've been going there for years. And I'm like, so you're a delivery guy now. And he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, they, they turn us on delivery people. And so we talked for a few minutes. And as we started to wrap up the conversation, he's like, I need to take a picture of your food and your doorstep. And so he pulled out his phone and took a picture. And I'm like, well, what's that for? And he's like, well, that's how we verify that the food was delivered. I'm like, well, tell me more about that. Well, they, they wrote a power app. They, they probably worked with some kind of Microsoft partner to do this, but they wrote a power app that they put on their phones to A, order, order items, and then B, verify those items got delivered to the customer. Talk about digital transformation. This is a little Mexican restaurant here in San Diego wow. that decided to do that. And, and yeah, it's, it's just amazing, right? And so that's one story. And then the second story is um, I had a Microsoft partner that had a law firm some, somewhere on the East Coast, and uh, they're probably about, I don't know, 50 employees in this law firm, and, and you know, very, very legacy and old school, as, as I would consider as an IT guy. And, and so they had kind of the same problem as that customer I mentioned before, where they're used to coming to the office, now they have to send people home. Well, their problem was their employees didn't have computers at home. Um, they had, the majority of their employees were assistants and of you know the millennial generation if you will and so you know they had ipads and smartphones and that kind of thing and so they had to figure out well how do we get these people to be productive at home and so then they started thinking about okay well we got to go out and buy laptops we got to buy you know more vpns we got to buy more file servers blah 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 and we said no just utilize office 365 utilize 
you know, what you're actually already using. We just need to, you know, build upon it. And so that partner worked with them and they built this nice solution where they could use an iPad and they can access their email and everything. And then the third example I'll give you is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart and that's really security driven. And something I've seen in the last few months and we're talking about war stories here, so I think this is a good one, is we had a customer that um, they, they, they were going through a hard time with all of this. And unfortunately they had to, they had to downsize a little bit in their employee population. And so their big concern was, well, we have people working from home. Um, some of them are accessing email and they're accessing Teams and other, other apps from their personal devices. And like, what if they're downloading files and saving it locally, you know, and that's, and that's customer data or it's, you know, intellectual property. You know, how do we, how do we deal with that? Because we don't control their personal devices. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really interesting, um, interesting problem. And, and of course, we helped them resolve that through you know, the security technology that Microsoft has. But that's a, a common challenge that you know, just about every organization out there has to start thinking about in this new work from home culture. I mean, it's great. You know, we, can, we have a lot of time in the day. We can get work done, be more productive. But we also have to think about security, especially if you're using you know, a personal device to access your email and that kind of thing. And so, you know, Conrad and Sean and, and Maggie, I don't know if you guys have any good stories there around how you've helped some of your customers. But you know, when I think about security, though, that's that's definitely a big priority here with working from home. Like, it's got to be secure. You know, you can't yeah. just deploy it and let somebody access email without. Well, I think that's that, down. that is important. I mean, we you you are in a rush to to get people access in whatever way you can. You know, some people uh, if they have iPads, like, oh, okay, you can use the native apps there, um, you, but you want it secure. Maybe you do Windows Virtual Desktop so you can do it multiple places and maybe that's the way they get access or they have a home computer. To, there's all these questions of, of access, devices, security. The one thing that you brought up earlier, and I'll let Maggie comment here with, with her, her catchphrase here a little bit, but when customers ask us, uh, uh, like, hey, how do, I, how do I make all this work with, uh, with our VPN? Maggie response is? Gross. <laughs> it is. It's it. It is gross. It's gross. Who needs a VPN anymore? We live in this world of Microsoft 365. VPNs are nonsense. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, if, if you need a VPN in because you have some local device that this runs in some ancient piece of software, cool. But only use it for that. Where are you spending all this money? The and I'll tell you, uh, many customers might have a firewall that goes in that acts as their VPN for a given site, but it's normally just one device. They also don't have the money to then put, you know, a load balanced, you know, set of VPN devices and have them on different circuits, right? This is when you get into high availability, just to do what? Access a file server? You know, back to Maggie's, you know, catchphrase here, it's gross, right? So you should really should think about putting that in the cloud just because you're not gonna invest in that level of security. You're not gonna invest that level of availability um, and you're just, you know, you're you're just not going to beat out what Microsoft has invested in. And, you know, uh, Matt, I'm sure you 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 wore this for a long time, but being in the role you're in, uh, you know, there was a lot of skepticism if Microsoft could do this, right? Microsoft, a security company, a laughable, right? Now, oh, not, yeah. not the same, right? So. Oh yeah, and it's and it's fascinating. I mean, you know, Microsoft, I'm, I'm sure everybody who's watching and listening to this could, would probably agree with me. I mean, you know, Microsoft has come a long way, even just in the last couple of years, let alone, you know, five to 10 years. And um, yeah, absolutely. And, and But the interesting thing about it, though, is <laughs> the technology is, it's almost like Hollywood. I mean, you can, you know, imagine, well, actually, I'll give you a great example here. So my, my wife, um, she got sent home from her employer, uh, but uh, we don't really have a personal computer at home. I, mean, I have my, my work computer, I have my lab and everything that I use, um, and that's my, my geek station, but she just has an iPad. And so her employer uh, decided to, uh, and they worked with a, a Microsoft partner to help them do this, but they decided to roll out Windows Autopilot. And so they gave her a stipend and said, here, you know, here's, here's a X amount of dollars, go out and buy a computer from a store, as long as it meets these requirements, Windows 10 Pro, and it had you know, eight gigabytes of RAM and whatever. Um, go out and buy that computer and then follow this instruction sheet to get it set up. And so I'm like, great, let's go buy a computer. I'm getting all excited. I'm a tech guy. And so we <laughs> go out and buy it. And um, 
And I wanted one that was like, you know, massive gaming machine. She's like, no, we have a budget to stick to here. But we bought this computer and then um, um, and then she brought home this sheet of paper and it was autopilot. I'm like, whoa, this is awesome because this is what I deal with almost every day. And so she turns on her computer and literally when she turned it on, um, it asked her to connect to a wireless network, connect to the Wi-Fi network here at home. And then it asked her to log in. She signed in with her username and password. And at that point forward, all of her apps, all of her policy, just everything got pushed down. It, it took a little bit of time, right? About an hour or so. So we went and you know did something else and we came back to it. And then it was sitting on a desktop ready to go. And she never had to have an IT person touch it. She never had to have a tech guy do anything with it. I mean, think about that. She bought a computer from the store, took it home, logged in, and everything just got pushed down to it. Yeah. That's oh my God. Hollywood. How, how excited were you just to, to watch her do it? I was pretty excited because, you know, this is what, and you guys know me, I mean, we, we talked about this forever and I, this is what I do. And so to watch that happen in real life, especially for my wife, I mean, I just like, man, this is awesome. And, and it validates for me that, and it was pretty satisfying too, that, you know, we are doing some great things here at Microsoft, but we have a customer here that is embracing that. We have a partner that helped them do this on the back end, And it's, it's just an amazing, you know, story. And, and then you, that's just one story in this, is now multiplied perhaps thousands or millions of times across the world, but that's the world that we live in now is that we don't have to worry about, you know, the technology, technology not being there, it's there. And what's interesting, and I'll just kind of, and I'll, I'll include this and I'll, I'll be quiet for a moment is her company. Um, I went out and talked to their IT guy after all of this, and I've never really talked to him before. And he's like, Oh yeah, we, <laughs> the story was, we didn't even know that we owned autopilot. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, we we bought you know Microsoft 365, but we bought it to do email and Teams and everything else. Um, but we didn't really do anything else with the other features. And our partner was working with us, and we're talking about this problem. And they're like, well, you already own Autopilot. I'm like, we do. And so I thought that was really interesting that they didn't even know that they own this technology, but they're already paying for it. And now they got value out of it. And check out the ROI from that, right? It's just yeah. it's amazing. It is something that we do talk to our customers frequently. It's actually probably another good topic. I think we either talk a little bit about it, um, but maybe we'll do it again, which is before you, when you have these problems, before you think about what should I go buy, it's good to just take you know stock of what you have licensed because you might already have it. <laughs> and, you did, and you're like, oh, I, didn't, I didn't even know that. And uh, it's, it's always a good time to, to check that periodically, especially when you're like, oh, we're going to do something. Let's look at five different vendors. Like, what, you guys already own this, and uh, which makes it much, much easier because whether you need uh, somebody like us or another partner to go do it or you do it yourselves, a lot of times, you know, getting organized and the pricing, you know, and, and the cost and the budget because this is, you know, it'll keep going. is kind of the hardest part. Uh, and if you already have it, like, man, that's just so sweet. So that's a that's a that's a great point. Um, I think we're almost getting up, up to our time. Spice, did we, um, uh, do we have any questions? Thank you very much, Conrad. As usual, you have read my mind. We are up to, we've got two minutes left and we have one question. I'd like to actually take this as a chance to wrap up. <clears throat> it's for people fresh for, uh, to working from home, what are tips to be productive uh, at home? Being at home can be so distracting. Everyone else is having fun. Um, <laughs> let's, let's start with you, Conrad. How do you keep from being distracted? Oh, that's a lifelong question. I have, I'm easily distracted. You know, um, I, I think for me is is um, uh, when I work. So I, Maggie and I work really close, and so you know she'll remind me of things, or I check I check other items from people chatting to me, reminding me of other items. And so as, as I check that, that keeps bringing me back into what what I what I need to go work on. Um, but when there's other things in the house that that are happening, I have my kids here. Um, I, I don't know. I think part of it is I, I talk with them and tell, tell them what my schedule is and try and find break times during the middle of the day or, or whenever I can get it to not just grab lunch, but to spend some time with them. Because I really I think that that's what's happening. They just want to spend time. So if they know it's coming, they know it's happening and we spend it, then I think it keeps things at ease. Yeah. How about you, Matt? Yeah, there's there's kind of three things I've, I've learned. Um, one, um, you, you want to find a dedicated place right i mean luckily you know i have a spare bedroom that i've kind of made my office it's got a sh it's got a shut door you know and and um i've I made my own space and that that definitely helps the second thing is um and i have coworkers like their garage is their space right just find something but um the second thing i've i've learned and i've kind of already mentioned is just time management you know have a plan 
for every day and, and understand like what you're going to get done that day and what, you know, what, what your priority level is. And then the third thing is um, just communicate, communicate with your manager, communicate with your peers, communicate with your customers, your business partners. Um, you know, when we are at home, it, we don't see each other. So the more communication, the better. So that's kind of my three, three recommendations. Yeah. How about you, Maggie? I do a couple things. Um, I, I try to block time in, in my day every day for a long walk. Having my puppy home helps because he likes the walks too. So making sure that I have time to disconnect and not be at my computer screen allows me to stay really focused when I am at my computer screen. And honestly, Microsoft to do, because if I think of something that needs to get done and I don't write it down immediately, it's never going to happen. Um, so I use Microsoft to do and I use planner to keep track of just all of the different projects and different places I need to be and, and things that I need to accomplish. And I am a I'm a checklist person in my personal life, in my work life. And so checking things off is the most satisfying thing in the world to me. So and Microsoft to do gives you a nice satisfying little ding when you say I've completed this. <laughs> it does. How about you, Jeff? You know, pr pretty similar to Maggie. I, yeah, I'm, I'm a list person, um, so I use Microsoft To Do. Um, but one of the things that I I do every day is I actually schedule breaks throughout the day, and I find that that um, keeps me more focused when I should be focused. And so, you know, I'll build in two or three different breaks uh, outside of you know breaking for lunch, and it it really helps me stay on task. And, uh, you know, the other thing that I do is I prioritize my meetings. Um, and by that, I mean, I, I don't accept every meeting. I mean, we could be in meetings, you know, from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Um, I'm really in a, in a position where I'm prioritizing and, and trying to uh, be cognizant also when I schedule meetings for other people. And I'll chip in. I think all of you have met my distraction. Um, I have a nine-year-old son at home who is currently schooling here, um, playing here, living here, and he gets so interested in what I'm doing that he comes in and he puts his head on my shoulder. I, I will be in a meeting sometimes. Jeff, I think you and Spencer have spoken for a number of minutes, but what I've yeah. found is that that's that point where he really needs that attention. He really needs dad, um, and it could be a hug or whatever, but instead he's looking at me and he's going, What's cloud app security? And I'll stop for five minutes and I'll explain it to him. And because my job is making content, a lot of times I use them almost like that rubber duck debugging where I'm talking to him helps me make my blogs and my content all the more clearer for having to explain like I'm nine. Um, so I, I just eat the distractions. Um, but guys, we are over time. I kind of knew this was gonna happen. Every time you get us in a room, we, we can talk for hours um, and we will be going on to talk for hours as we're working on some new products here, but wanted to share the crowd with everybody. Thank you everybody for joining us and thank you very much to our guests, Matt, Jeff, and Maggie, and we will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody.